The answer choices here make it clear that we're going to need to think about sentence structure. We have a semicolon, we've got some and, so I'm, I'm wondering here if we're going to need to combine two sentences in some way. So let's take a look. In her analysis of Edith Wharton's The House of Mirth, scholar Candace Wade observes that the novel depicts the upper classes of New York society as consumed by the appetite of a soulless materialism um, and an apt assessment given that The House of Mirth is set during the Gilded Age, a period marked by rapid industrialization, economic greed, and widening wealth disparities. Oh, this is a mean question. Okay, so here's what's happening. I, I understand it. Uh, this whole thing is just one sentence. Um, here's where I start to break it apart. Um, the first part is clearly some sort of intro clause. In her analysis of Edith Wharton's The House of Mirth, right? So that leads up to a comma and the, the fact that it kind of starts with the preposition, we're definitely adding on this kind of intro clause that's leading us into the main sentence. Um, then it's a very long sentence Scholar Candace Wade observes that the novel depicts the upper classes of society as consumed by the appetite of a soulless oops, don't need don't need the graphing calculator a soulless materialism. Um, so that kind of ends the the quote. It ends the thought. And then what's crazy here? This is so annoying. Is this part at the end is just a description of the quote, right? So the it's an assessment, right? It's her assessment. It's her quote. So it's an assessment that, um, wow, yeah, an assessment, an apt assessment given that House of Mirth is set during the Gilded Age. So I don't even know how to highlight this for you guys. Um, starting with an apt, given that the House of Mirth is set during the Golden Age. That is a an, an extra clause that is describing the... Uh, the quote that we are provided from uh, Candace Wade. Then, to make things even more complicated, we have an extra clause attached, a period marked by rapid industrialization, economic greed, and widening wealth disparities, which is defining what the Gilded Age is. So we have just all these layers of kind of this sentence where we have all these definitions and, and extra clauses that are giving us more information. And then on, on top of this, the, the, the problem with the blue is that it also is a list. So there's commas inside there that have nothing to do with sentence structure really other than just like, well, we put a commas between items in a list. So the answer here is not going to be A or B because when we transition from this main sentence, this green part, to the kind of extra clause that have kind of bracketed at the end here, we don't want to set it up as kind of an, an extra sentence. And that's what the and is doing. So um, it's it's not a continuation of that thought. It's it's a, uh, or it's not a, like, it's not like a secondary piece of that. It's not a list of two things, right? That's why we would use an and in these cases is we would kind of be like, here's a list of two things, the quote and something else, you know, another quote maybe, but that's not what's happening here. Plus, very, very rarely are we ever gonna see this where we have the semicolon and the and. The only time we would do that is if we were using the semicolon in the more um, a weird way that we see it occasionally where it's a, a list of things that are so complicated that we use a, a semicolon to separate them and so that the semicolon would come at the end of the list like a comma would. Um, so that just doesn't make sense here. Then the, the question is, well, do we need a comma or not? And the reason we do is pretty obvious. I feel like I've kind of already made that point is whenever we have these kind of shifts in the sentence, these breaks, these interruptions, these things that we're adding on, these extra clauses, we use a comma to show that. Sometimes it's like at the beginning where we have the comma telling us we've gone from the intro clause to the, the main sentence itself. Here, we would need this comma to say the opposite, that we've, we're leaving our main sentence and we're moving into some extra description. But no matter what, anytime we have these like, these clauses, these changes in color is kind of how I see it in my mind. We need a comma to show that. And so it wouldn't make sense for D to be the answer. We, we, the, the, the quotation mark is not enough to kind of separate that out. We need the comma. That would exist regardless of whether it was a quotation or something else. It's, it's really the structural element um, that we need. This is just so mean. I mean, the answer is definitely C. I'm not in any doubt here. 
it's more just that I know that most of my students are going to have a lot of trouble on this because you just, your, your brain goes blank when a sentence is more than like two lines. Like you just kind of lose track. But we really need to be able to kind of break things apart and notice the different components of a sentence because that is exactly what the SAT is testing. And we're not going to be able to rely on our old sense of what a comma is. When I was a kid, I was taught that a comma is a pause. That's not really a rule. That's a fake rule. It's not. Sometimes we pause when there's no comma. Sometimes there's a comma. We don't really pause because the, the extra clause is kind of just flows in. And so the comma is what it's really doing is it's showing a break in the sentence. And that is exactly what's happening here. It's just there's a lot of breaks in this sentence. So it's a really confusing question.